President Jason. Um, Cherise Conkle and her spouse, Andrew, have been fostering seven years and adopted one child, Devin, after he spent five years in foster care. They have seen the gaps in the child welfare system firsthand and knew they wanted to address those needs since the day they received their first foster placement in 2017. Cherise, Cherise has a bachelor's degree in science from the University of Illinois. Cherise has previous experience, work experience in social media management, freelance blogging and ad campaigns, and worked in real estate for six years. For 10 plus years experience in fundraising, marketing, and community outreach is well led her to helping co-found and lead this nonprofit. Cherise has volunteered locally and nationally for the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation for 15 plus years and has been serving as Executive Director of Foster Village Peoria since its launch in June of 2022. In her spare time, she helps co-lead her church's youth and Sunday school program loves spending time with her family, and I love this one, and has an unhealthy attachment to lemon lime Gatorade. That's the best Gatorade flavor. I'm so happy he said Cherise that. Thank you. I'm also short, so I'm going to pull that down. All right. Um, as Tim said, I'm Cherise Kunkel, and I'm one of the co-founders of Foster Village Peoria, and I currently serve as the executive director. So today I wanna to talk a little bit about what we do and why it's so important because we are a relatively new nonprofit. How many people in this room don't really know much about Foster Village Peoria? Yes, okay, that's great because you're gonna to learn today. All right, so some of these statistics are very shocking when you first learn about them. But as a foster parent um, of seven plus years, I can say that these no longer shock me, and that's very sad. There are 400,000 kids in foster care in the United States. 22,000 of those kiddos are in Illinois. 1,500 are in the Tri-County area. So Foster Village Peoria focuses on three counties, Peoria, Tazewell, and Woodford County. Now that 1,500 is not completely representative of the number of kiddos that we serve or we can be serving, because we also serve uh, families who still have custody but are working case plans in order to keep custody. We serve biological families that have reunified and have regained custody of their kiddos. We also serve uh, families who have adopted kids from foster care that still need support. And we also serve um, individual uh, children when they age out of the system and they're navigating their first few years of independence um, without caregivers to help them. So that number is really much larger than 1,500. But unfortunately, 40% 40 40 of the homeless population is current foster youth or former foster youth. 90, apparently the formatting was a little funny when it got sent over, so sorry for the little weird stuff like the percentage down. 90% of youth who have had more than five placements, meaning five different homes they've lived in, will end up in the criminal justice system. Five homes, you might think that's a lot, but I can tell you a lot of our kiddos that come when they come to us, they've already been in three homes or more. It's not that uncommon for kiddos to be bounced around between foster homes. 98% of children who are identified as survivors of sex trafficking have had some type of involvement with child welfare system. And I'm glad you brought up the the Zoom meeting last week um, and the topic that is prevalent in this area. I have worked with youth in foster care that have been part of trafficking. Um, so it is local and it is an issue. Um, at least 80% of foster youth suffer mental health issues like PTSD and depression. I can say 100% of the kiddos we've had in our home have had depression or anxiety or PTSD. Um, and we not only serve youth, but we also support and walk alongside those caregivers so they can take care of the children from hard places. Sadly, up to 50% of foster parents quit after their first placement because of a lack of support. And we have six great foster agencies in our area, but unfortunately there's such a high number of kids and they're overworked, understaffed. They have to focus on recruiting foster parents because we have kids sleeping on floors in agencies right now. So that's their goal. They don't have the capacity or the ability to continue to support these families. So that's why we created Foster Village Peoria. So in June of 2022, Danielle, Emily, and I, we are all foster mamas, 
we started Foster Village Peoria. We decided in February we needed it and we launched it by June. We are an affiliate chapter. It's essentially like a franchise. So we are a separate 501c3. We make our own decisions, programs, funding, but we use branding and mentorship from Foster Village Inc. based out of Austin, Texas. There are now 12 affiliates nationally. Um, we were the eighth one to launch, but now we're already the third biggest one in number of people we have served. Um, since our launch, we served over 800 households or families. And we do this through our five programs that all kind of support our mission. And our mission is to bridge the gap in support and resources um, for the foster care system by meeting needs by providing educational and emotional support, and also by advocating. I wanna talk briefly about each program so you know what we do. But first I wanna just mention that the growth in the number of people we served between 2022 and 2023 was 67%. So we're not sure what 2024 will look like. We think it'll be a little bit slower, but we did not anticipate how quickly we grew. So we were very lucky we were able to continue um, supporting all the families that came to us within our first 12 months. Our first program is our biggest program in both the uh, number of volunteers it takes to run, the amount it costs, and the number of families we've served. So we provide tangible, physical, basic needs for kiddos um, who are affected by foster care. So this is a kiddo who might be entering foster care within 30 days, a kiddo who's reunified home, um, a kiddo who's going to a new home but doesn't have anything to bring with them, um, and then also intact families can utilize this as well. But we provide two types of requests. We provide welcome bags, which have a couple um, days worth of items needed to get that kid started. And we also provide special requests, which are bigger items, mostly bunk beds, mattresses, and bedding is what we typically give. But we also do car seats and strollers and things. It's really crucial we provide these welcome bags and these items within a couple hours of the request normally. So our goal is to make sure every family gets these items within 24 hours delivered right to their home by our volunteers. The reason we do that, as a foster mom, when you are receiving a placement for the first time, you might have kiddos that are overwhelmed, traumatized, scared. They don't know you. They're not going to feel comfortable going shopping and buying things. And you don't know much about the kiddos before they come. You don't know what size they are. Sometimes you don't even know their age or their name. So it's really crucial to make sure we are providing a little bit of this support as they're navigating social worker visits, home visits, visits with the parents, intake doctor's appointments, beginning paperwork. There's so many things we're juggling. We wanna provide this in a timely manner. So we do do that. Um, we provided 192 welcome bags last year. This is just 2023. And we provided 122 special requests last year. Um, and most of those were bunk beds with mattresses and bedding. I wanna go a little bit more in depth about our requests because this is our largest program. Um, our welcome bags have three days worth of clothes, including undergarments, pajamas, every toiletry they might need. So dental care, shampoo, conditioner, body wash, lotion. Um, if it's a baby, we'll add, you know, diapers, wipes, pacifiers, bottles, bibs. If it's a teenager, we'll put in deodorant, body spray, um, face wash, uh, a water bottle for them to take to school. And then we also always add a blanket and some comfort items. So typically a couple toys, or for example, if it's a teenager, we'll do a basketball, a journal, maybe a coloring book and a board game or a book. Um, if it's a baby, we'll do like toddler toys and lovies and um, other supplies they need. Caregivers can also request tennis shoes. If they don't have tennis shoes, a lot of the kiddos just come in flip-flops. Um, they can also request a coat. A lot of kiddos don't have coats and then they can request water bottles. And as well, we just added, they can request a school uniform uh, a book bag, basic school supplies, and starting next week, they're gonna be able to add a sensory item as well. And then our special requests, um, those are automatically approved as long as they give us the information we need and they are delivered right away by a volunteer. Um, but we also uh, give those special requests as quickly as possible. If it's a bed or a crib, we can typically, typically get it shipped to the home within 24 hours. But we do require agency approval so we'll call up the agency and say, hey, um, LSSI, like we have Susie Q and she needs a bunk bed, you know, for her and her sister. Um, is this something that they need and is this something you can provide? We always go to the agency first. Um, they have more funding than us, so we wanna make sure we're tapping into those resources first. But usually, yeah, they'll say, yep, 
they need a bunk bed and we cannot provide it. So once they approve it, then we move forward and they get that, that bed and mattress, everything shipped right to them. Our next program is our Youth Connect program. These are usually out in the community. We rent a space like Peoria Playhouse, Mueller Pediatric Sensory Gym. We want to give the kids privacy while they're playing. So a lot of times these kids have emotional issues and struggles and sensory issues, and they can get overwhelmed in large places. I had a 13-year-old who would um, get so overwhelmed, she would literally have a panic attack and melt to the floor. Um, and you could be in Target, you could be anywhere. So we want to provide this safe place for kids to be themselves, to have these issues. And the coolest thing is everybody there is a foster parent or somehow affected by foster care. So they get it. There's no judgment. They're all supporting each other. We see kids building friendships outside of this, making play dates now, caregivers exchanging phone numbers. They're building a support network through these events. Um, and we've had, we had six youth events last year. We had 173 youth and their caregivers attend those. Our next program is our support gathering. So we have monthly support groups. Uh, we want to give caregivers a space to vent, to relax, to share um, in a kid-free zone while eating a dinner. So we provide dinner, we provide on-site childcare. We uh, contract through a third-party company to pay for that childcare. So it's CPR, first aid trained and trauma trained. We use the same child care workers on a rotation so that way the kiddos know these individuals. Um, unfortunately, we can only have up to 12 kids per support group for child care reasons. So these groups actually filled after the second meeting of the year last year, and we had wait lists. So um, due to limited funding, we weren't able to start anymore. Um, but we are launching a third group this month. We're hoping to launch a fourth in the spring so that all the families in the community that have reached out to us can get connected to a support group local to them. Another program we have is our visit room. This is a, a neutral safe space for biological families to do their visits with their kids. So for a biological parent that is working towards getting custody of their kids, they might have to do parenting classes or counseling. They might have to um, continue working, but they also do their, their visits. And this is their very cherished time with their kids, but it can be hard to navigate schedules. So if they're working full time and their kids are going to school, but the agencies who have visit rooms are only open nine to four Monday through Fridays, it's very difficult to get that figured out. Um, we had a sibling set of three and we ended up spending four hours once a month in a McDonald's because the behaviors the kiddos had weren't really appropriate for libraries and we didn't really know where else to go. So people, um, agencies can request our visit space, which is open by appointment, evenings, weekends, even holidays. We had a, a biological mother who was able to have a Christmas Eve uh, visit with her kiddos and she brought crack pots and gifts and everything. It was, it was beautiful. Um, another fun fact is we have a local family that sponsors uh, new books. So these are books that are geared towards topics that might be of interest to these families. And parents can read a book and then send it with their kiddo as a memento to take with them to remember. And then our last program is our educational workshops. We provide online free trainings on various topics that are important to caregivers. And while these are geared towards uh, caregivers or children who have been in foster care, they are open to the public. So anybody could technically attend them. Um, we do like parenting kids from trauma, uh, navigating IEPs, understanding school supports, understanding court acronyms and CPR training, for example. We had six trainings last year in 79 households. A lot of times it's like couples share a computer screen, but we had 79 households attend those. Um, another really cool aspect of those is we give certificates of completion. Foster parents have to do continuing education in order to get relicensed. But for some reason, the classes they offer are the same every year. And after you've taken them like once or twice, it's like you're not really learning anything new. So we want to offer more classes that are actually going to benefit the caregivers to help them care for the kids. Those are our five main programs of support right now. Um, last year, we had uh, $61,000 worth of expenses. And very luckily, we squeaked in and brought in $63,000. So we, we made it. We didn't have to turn anyone away. Um, this year, we're projecting about a 30% growth, we think. Um, and we're anticipating about $83,000 worth of expenses. And we are volunteer ran and led. So all these individuals donate between 5 to 20 hours a month. 
to run our program. So these are what you normally would be staff. Um, they all donate their time. I am the only person full transparency. I believe that's important. I get a small stipend because I'm volunteering 50 hours a week to run this, but nobody else receives any kind of monetary value. Um, everybody don't. We do have some positions open if anybody is interested in coordinating a program or helping us with grants. Um, and we have a board of directors. We have an amazing board of directors that meets once a month to invest, advocate, and oversee our operations. We have six people on that right now. We're hoping to get a full slot of nine before 2025. So if anybody knows anybody interested, reach out to me. But we're so thankful for their wisdom. And then volunteering, we have tons of ways. We have flexible volunteers, we have committees people can serve on. You can just come in once in a while and count inventory. Um, you can come and lend talent or share expertise. So um, we have volunteer onboarding trainings about once a month, once a month. Um, and we have lots of information about volunteering on our website. And then I just wanna say we are so thankful for all of our grant support last year as well as our donors. We have some monthly donors that um, donate every single month that allows us to set budgets and be able to plan our programs to know how many families we can meet needs of. And we have a lot of um, company match donations and event sponsors as well. Um, and obviously we not would have been able to do what we did last year without every single one of them. Um, one way we keep our costs down is we have donation drives. So businesses, organizations, and churches can have a donation drive that they run once a month. We provide a box, we provide a wish list, and people bring in new items um, to donate. And we actually have people in the community who can't physically volunteer, but they might go on our wish list on our website every month and like buy five things off of it and ship it right to us. Those mystery shoppers, who I don't know who they are, but are amazing, and our donation drives actually brought in $28,000 worth of new items last year for us, which obviously we've not been able to run the resource closet without it. So we're hoping to have as many donations drives this year as well. And then lastly, there are just so many ways for people to get involved. If you know anybody that is looking to volunteer or donate time or like shopping and wants to donate items, um, there's lots of ways to get involved. And I have on the tables, there's some general flyers about what we do with some QR codes. In the back, there are also flyers um, to links on how to help or get involved. And then we also have our big gala coming up with our first gala at the end of this month that um, it's gonna, we're hoping it's gonna be our biggest fundraising event. So we still have quite a few tickets to sell for that. So um, there's a QR code on that for the tickets as well. Um, it's $80 a person to attend that. It includes dinner, two drinks, and then we'll have silent auctions, live auctions, and then we have a band and some dancing and stuff as well. And that'll be at Packard Plaza, Packard Plaza as well. So um, I can answer questions. That is the, I know I give you a lot of information in a very small amount of time. I'm also a fast talker, so. Uh, <laughs> and if you guys have questions about Foster Village Peoria or fostering, I will share my personal experience as well. I, it doesn't matter. First of all, thank you. Thank you for coming and sharing with our group, and thank you for what you're doing to make a difference in so many lives. Do you have social media? I see up yes. there, but ways for us to get connected with you that we can reshare posts and, and help you out. Um, that will help us as individuals because we're service above self. So that's sure. really what's my main question. So thank you. Yeah, so our, our Facebook and our Instagram are both the same. It's Foster Village Peoria. And our website is www.fostervillagepeoria. So if you even Google Foster Village Peoria, everything should pop up. Um, we also have a YouTube that it's mostly private playlists of like the recordings of the trainings for foster parents who ask for them. So we don't have a lot of videos on YouTube. We don't have a media person Right now, I'm kind of doing that. It's not really my forte. So, um, but yes, we have a very active Facebook and Instagram account with a lot of information on there. How do you integrate with Children's Home and CASA and some of the other organizations around town that provide uh, similar services? Yeah, so we work closely with all six agencies. So each agency, we have a couple different liaisons who we email every month our upcoming events, trainings, we email them about changes in the programs or reminders about the program. So every month we are, you know, touching point with all six agencies locally. Um, and that's mainly how we're touching the community. Uh, we also, like CASA is also on that list. Um, so it's like, let it be, um, I think we have like 
all six agencies and like four other foster care related. What are those six agencies? Uh, so Children's Home, Lutheran Social Services, Family Corps, DCFS, Center of Youth and Family Solutions, and Camelot. I was wondering, uh, thank you for all you do. Um, I was wondering, I heard on various news programs about foster homes. Are they uh, people that decide to be a foster home, are they compensated by the state or the federal government? Some are, and it depends on the level. So kinship homes, which might be like a teacher who takes in a student they know, because they know them, they're not really compensated, not like a foster parent. So um, average foster parent, it depends on the age, but it's like, for example, we got like $300 a month for most of our kiddos. Um, but we also had a 16 year old that was, you know, six foot two and 250 pounds. And that was like two outfits, you know? So like, um, so yes, when you take a kiddo, when you take a kiddo with special needs, you get more because often you can't work when you're doing that if they have a high level needs. There is a new program you might have heard on the radio called Therapeutic Foster Care, where they're advertising you get $3,000 a month. That's 10, 10, they have 10 slots. There's like 10 families that are doing that. So most foster families are not getting $3,000 per kid. They're getting a couple hundred dollars per kid. So Do, do you find that um, some of these foster families that take on children for, for fees uh, get disillusioned because of the work and then turn them over to you? I think, uh, I think foster families, for the most part, want to be a foster family for the right reasons. But then they might get the kids and it's a lot of work. I mean, I've right. never had a kid who didn't have trauma. Um, I, you know, I, so I think in general, like it's not about the compensation, but you know, there's also a lot of issues with the, the insurance. So they have something called youth care insurance and there's only like three places that offer counseling and there's 12 months wait lists. So you have these kiddos who are, or who might be suicidal, for example, and you're getting them SAS screen, you're taking them to the ER, but there's no counseling available anywhere. You know, so I think it's just a lack of providers, a lack of support, a lack of resources. And then they're just like, well, I can't handle this. This is too much. I'm, I can't quit my job. And I think that's why I think they get burnt out really quick. And that's why they quit. Well, thank you for all you do. Sure. It's really needed. Thank you. Thank you.